Good morning. Good morning. Uh, I hope everybody's blessed and as blessed as me, and, and we all are blessed, and that's one of the things we're going to talk about is we are so, so blessed um, as God's church, a royal priesthood, a holy nation that is blessed with the blood of Christ. And, and so last week we talked about, uh, Eric had a lesson, and he he was birthed Bartholomew, and he, and he talked and kind of related maybe some of the feelings, some of the thoughts that Bartholomew had through the crucifixion and the passion, and, 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 and he related the story of Peter and John running down to the tomb and seeing the, seeing the empty tomb, and, and, and then talking about the room and Jesus appearing in front of, the, of, of them, um, and I and I and I'm trying to put my my myself in their shoes. Um, the, you know the 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 where they were at, at that moment, fear, uh, anxiety. Where we go next? What are we going to do? Challenging their faith, and then all of a sudden, Jesus appears, and their faith is affirmed. Um, and then the, the, the commission that Jesus gave that group that we, we learned from the writing of Matthew. Then in, in Matthew 28, 18 through 19, then Jesus came to them and said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Um, Peter was in that room. Peter was one of the, the, you know, as we learned in Acts, Acts, um, uh, 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 he preached. And he, he, he taught. Um, we're going to talk about First, first Peter and some words that Peter say, says in First Peter that just meant, mean, meant a lot to me in, in, in my early growth. And, and uh, so, you know, First Peter has been, has been called uh, basically, and it's a letter to Christians, Christians that are suf- suffering at that time in, in some atrocities that we, we just can't imagine, basically telling them, no matter their situation, stop whining and be Christians. And, and uh, have you ever felt that way and feeling sorry for yourself and, 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 and lacking purpose and, and lacking um, uh, fervor of what God has intended for you? Um, well, Peter addresses that. Um, it started one. T- I was having breakfast, uh, and, I, and I know a lot of you didn't know him, and, he, and he's out West Texas now, and it's with Eddie Eddie Pitchford, and I know Ray thinks the world of him, and 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 just a great servant of of, of God. And we were doing a Bible study, and he gave me this little thin book, and and, and it was called A Royal Priesthood, and and I know I'd I'd been in church all my life. And, and just in that study, we are all preachers. We're all represented, representatives of Christ. And with that comes a responsibility and a purpose. And, and it drove that to home to me. And so when I was thinking about what I wanted to talk about, it just kept, I kept on coming back to a royal priesthood. Um, and so, as I mentioned, this book was written to Christians. Christians, most of them were Jews that had been exiled from their families, exiled from their communities, um, you know, slaves, uh, persecuted, and, and, you know, the Romans were not gentle. Um, but their families weren't gentle get ostracized for just professing that Christ was their Savior. 
Um, so, in 1 Peter 2, 2 I'm going to read 1 Peter 2, 1 through 8 to give you a little sense of what, he, what he's, he's talking about the world and how they think of what the world's thinking. Therefore, rid yourselves of all malice and all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and slander of every, every kind. Be like newborn babies. Crave spiritual milk so that it will make, grow up in your salvation and that you have, and that now that you have tasted that the Lord is good. As you come to him, the living stone, rejected by humans, but chosen by God and precious to him, you also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For in this scripture it says, See, I lay a stone in Zion, a chosen and precious cornerstone, and the one who trusts in him will never be put to shame. Now to you who believe, this stone is precious. But to those who do not believe, the stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone and a stone that causes people to stumble and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the message and they don't believe in him. Um, they didn't receive him. He came like a servant. They expected a king. He came to suffer and they expected, they expected a conqueror. Jesus was, they, the Jews rejected him, and lots have rejected him since. And we are called to be a people, to be his people, and preach him, and live through him in every day and everything we do. So, 1 Peter 2, 9 through 12, but you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness and into his wonderful light. Once you were not a people, but now you are a people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but you now have mercy. Aren't those beautiful words? A big time charge for us. Um, Hebrews 10, 11 through 18, I think, really hammers home what he's talking about here in, 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 in is it, the, the sacrifice. When he's writing, the Jews understood what was the sacrifice and who gave the sacrifice. How did they get their sins forgiven in the old days, right? They had to sacrifice an animal or they, you know, and had to, you know, say certain rituals because everything went through the priest, and they had to do it every, every week or every month. Um, Jesus changed that on the cross. Hebrews 10, 11 through 18, day after day, every priest stands and performs his religious duties. Again and again, he offers, us this, offers the same sacrifice, which really don't take away sins. But when his priest had offered for all time one sacrifice for when this priest offered for all time, one sacrifice for sins, he sat down at the right hand of God. And since that time, he waits for his enemies to be made, to be made his footstool, footstool. For by one sacrifice, he has made perfect forever those who are being made holy. He has made us perfect forever. Holy Spirit also testifies to, to us about this. First he says, this is the covenant I will make with them after the, that time, says the Lord. I will put my laws into their hearts and I will write them on their minds. Then he, then he adds, their sins and lawless acts I will remember no more. No more. As far as the east is from the west, your sins are forgiven. And, and where these have been forgiven, sacrifice for sin is no longer necessary because he's done that sacrifice. And... We are his people and set apart. We are his people and set apart. Ephesians uh, 
2, verses 3 through 10. All of us who lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our flesh and following its desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we were, we, we were by nature deserving of wrath. Kind of what, what Mark was reading about earlier. We were in it, and in, 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 in it is, is just part of our nature. But because of this great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ, even when we were dead in sin, it is by grace you have been saved. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with Him in the ra- raised up, raised us up with Christ and seated us with Him in the heavenly realms in Jesus Christ, in order in that the coming ages He might show the incomparable riches of His grace expressed in His kindness to us in Jesus Christ. For it is by grace you have been saved, through faith, and it is not from yourselves, it is a gift of God. Not by works, so that no one can boast. For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do God good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. I love that term, we are God's handiwork. The church is God's handiwork. It is his plan, his, his path for, for the salvation of others. Without us, um, without us, you know, uh, without the church, where would the world be? I, 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 we're, we're thoroughly entwined with the risen Son of God. We are thoroughly entwined with the royal, with the risen Son of God. Our citizenship is in heaven, not here. Um, one of the things that royal priesthood and what it meant to those, the royal line was to say the Davids and, and, and all that line, and they ruled, and the priests did most of the sacrificing. What God has intended is for it to be together. We are heirs of the throne. We are royalty, and we are the priests that give the message. Um, and, and we are called in this, in this text to be different. What does that mean? In Matthew, in Matthew 5, in Matthew 5, verses 13 through 14, you are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its saltiness, how, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled on. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. We are to be different. And through, and those Jesus words are infiltrated through the words that Peter has in his, in his letter. We are to be that so we are to get amongst the people and be different, serving one another, serving the world, and, and, and uh, praying and, and, and preaching the gospel. That is what we are called to do. Um, co-heirs, Romans eight seventeen. Now, if we are children, then we are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ if indeed we share in his sufferings, in order that we may share in his glory. So, what are our duties? Royal priesthood, what are some of our duties? I'd say teach, preach, be accountable to one another. Be a people of prayer. Hebrews 4, 4 14 through 16, Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has ascended into heaven... Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to the faith we profess. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with us in our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are. Yet he did not sin. Let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. Be a people of prayer. Um, he talks about what our, our spiritual sacrifices are. And, and as, a, as a royal 
priesthood as individual Christians, we have each other. What are, what are some of the things we need to be sacrificing? The first thing is ourselves. Romans 12, 1, 2, through 2. Therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good and pleasing perfect will. Our, Galatians 2.20 I have been crucified, this is Paul talking, I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live. But Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and he gave himself for me. We each could put our name in there. Brent has been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I live, but it's Christ that lives in me. So sacrificing ourselves for God's purpose. Second is to pray, praise God. Hebrews 13, 15 through 16. Through Jesus, therefore let us continually offer to God a sacrifice of praise. Give him the glory. The fruit of lips that openly profess his name. And do not forget to do good and share with others, for with such sacrifices God is pleased. And that kind of goes to the next one, is serving others. So, sacrifice ourselves to God. Praise God in everything we do. Give Him glory and serve others. Uh, Galatians 6.10 and in the end of um, uh, Hebrews there in 13, 6.10 Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good for all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. We're called to serve one another. So not everybody can preach or feels comfortable. Not everybody can go in, in the foreign lands and, 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 and minister. But we can all serve. We can all serve. Um, Fourth thing is sharing the gospel. And sometimes that doesn't have to be preaching on a corner or, or teaching. It can be just being a Christian. You're preaching through your, your acts, through your, your being, through the, the way you approach life, um, through your nurturing of others. Uh, proclaim what he has done for you. Bringing others to Christ. That's all part of, of our spiritual sacrifice is giving ourselves and, and, our, and, our, and our beings to the purpose. Next one is our lives. Um, our lives belong to Christ. Um, and the last one I have is continue to acknowledge him and his sacrifice. Reflect. On the, on, on, on the sacrifice that Jesus made, the pain and agony that he had on the cross because he loved us so much. And the victory. We went, we went and saw, uh, now, don't, don't judge, don't judge. We went and saw Jesus Christ Superstar. And, and it, was, it was some glorious things, and, you know, and, 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 and it, was, it was good, and we were glorified by it, and Maybe I would change a little bit. And the one thing I would change is they should have ended in either the room with Jesus reappearing or the empty tomb. But uh, that's what we need to praise is for the empty tomb. And that Christ is up in, the, up in heaven being, being in us through us. Um. So, in, in conclusion, royal priesthood, it has to mean something for you individually. But it is, it is a calling for the church. It is a calling for the church. It is a purpose for the church. 
whether you're, what, no matter your circumstances, you're called to be a Christian. You're called, and, you know, I've, I've, I've heard uh, folks try to justify, you know, like God didn't, you know, God blessed slavery. God blessed certain things in, in our marriage. You know, that's not the case at all. All Paul was talking about was, no matter your circumstance, be a Christian. Be upstanding and be separate and apart. We have a home. We have a forever home. Our, our, we need to be a community of prayer, uh, the royal priesthood, um, we need a holy nation, a, 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 we're all about God. We're God's possession, and he's pleased. Um, in, in 2 Peter 3, 8, 9, I think he wrote, this is mine, this is Brent Hibbets' own interpretation, so you can take it for what it's worth. I think he wrote he wrote First Peter, and it's a blessing. It's a blessed letter, um, and and it was uplifting, and and they were in agony and suffering, and and they were expecting Jesus to come back, like tomorrow. You know, have you ever been suffering so much that you just wish he would come for you? that he would come back at that time? 2 Peter 3, 8 through 9. But do not forget this one thing, dear friends. With the, door, with the Lord, a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like a day. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. Instead, he is patient with you, not want, wanting anyone to perish but everyone to come to repentance. That's the key, right? Your grandkids, your grandkids, your great-grandkids, the people that you don't even know that you're going to love a thousand years from now, God wants them to be saved. God wants those, 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 those souls to profess that Christ is their son, the Son of God. was the message that Peter was telling them, don't be so anxious. You got, you got kinfolk downstream that need to be saved. And there's, there's old, old Joe over here in, in, in Tuscaloosa, Alabama, that he, he, he is, he's close. And he's, he's going to come to Christ, but not right this second. And, we need, and I want him. And we are that tool. And I want the last, my last parting thing, and we'll say a prayer real quick, and then Ray's going to come up. Um, Ephesians three seventeen through nineteen. I want to leave you with this 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 scripture, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love may have power together with all of Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and how long, how deep and how high is the love of Christ and to know that his love that surpasses all knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Thank you, Brent, a royal priesthood. You reminded me of a, of a great moment in Ann's life, my wife's life. We've got a lot of new people here who don't even know what the name Ann means. 1990, we moved to Hendersonville, where I preached for a while, Tennessee. And remember, Ann was reared in a children's home. She never knew a mom, never knew a dad. And she had a different perspective on a lot of things than I did. 
We moved to Hendersonville. That's right in the center of all the country music, western stars, men, women. And we loved to take a walk each day. And the very first week that we lived there, we got down to the street. You don't have many sidewalks there. You walk right in the middle of the highway of the roads. And she punches me and she says, there's Johnny Cash. Well, it was John Cash and June Carter Cash walking together, holding hands. They did that at least once a week. But I've never seen Anne wilt like this and put it in the perception of a royal priesthood. John said, welcome neighbors. He lived about a block away from us. And we grew to love them. We grew to be pretty good friends. John grew up in the Church of Christ. Most people don't know that. All those great religious songs that he wrote. His mother was a member of the Church of Christ. I helped with her funeral while I was living there. And you just never know who's in a house a block away from you or a mile away from you. But you know what? John let us know in a hurry. I mean, we were just at our tongues hanging out. John said, hey, I'm a sinner just like you are, and I'm only saved by the grace of God, a royal priesthood. Father, sometimes we get down and out. Sometimes we cry a lot. Sometimes we major on the minors. But Father, may us never forget how much you love us, how much you love your church, and how many great expectations expectations you have for us. Yeah, a, a day seems like a long day when we're crying. But to you, you're looking down the road. God, help us see where you might use us. In Jesus' name, amen.